good day everyone thank you for taking time to attend our webinar nutrition internationals technical assistance to the philippines for mobilizing local governments for improved nutrition action i see we have over 150 people with us already today and i'm sure many more are joining we are delighted to have you all here with us today my name is Dr. Idara Shrikant. I'm Nutrition International Stand Project Manager for Asia and as such, I oversee our technical assistance portfolio in the Philippines. Before we begin, I would like to go over some housekeeping. Please do note that this webinar is being recorded and the recording and the presentations will be shared publicly at a later date. Please also feel free to introduce yourself in the chat box. It's always great to see who is participating and from where. Just be sure to set the two dialog box to everyone so that everyone attending can see it. Finally, please do feel free to post questions for the speakers in the chat box throughout the webinar and we shall take note of them for the interactive panel discussion. Next slide, please. I acknowledge the efforts of National Nutrition Council of Government of Philippines in scaling up nutrition and we are privileged to be working with and supporting them in this endeavor. I also acknowledge the support of UK aid from the UK government, the donor of the TAN project. Next slide, please. Some background on Nutrition International and the TAN project. Through its Nutrition Technical Assistance Mechanism, in short, NTEAM, Nutrition International shares its expertise globally to support the scale-up of nutrition for the most vulnerable. We believe that the knowledge rigorously obtained and generously shared is key to effective progress for nutrition. NTEAM provides timely and coordinated expert technical assistance to the governments, multilateral organizations, development banks and other global nutrition partners to overcome gaps in capacity, design and delivery of multi-sectoral national nutrition action plans. NTEAM encourages broad use of knowledge by translating technical information and research into accessible guidance, tools and capacity strengthening resources. Across all areas in which we work and taking a gender sensitive approach, we provide guidance, oversight, and quality assurance to ensure relevant and impactful technical assistance. Technical Assistance for Nutrition, in short, TAN, is a project within Nutrition International's Nutrition Technical Assistance Mechanism funded with UK aid from the UK government. Through the NTEAM's TAN project, Nutrition International has been working with National Nutrition Council of Philippines since June 2016, which is of the past five years, supporting them in formulation and operationalization of Philippines Plan of Action for Nutrition 2017-2022. During these five years, around 3.5 to 4 years of our work with NNC revolved around mobilization of local government units, which is the topic of today's webinar. And I'm sure our distinguished speakers would share our four years of extensive work in 30 minutes of presentation followed by panel discussion. Next slide, please. In today's webinar, we are honored to be joined with our esteemed speakers from the Philippines. Mr. Reginaldo Gullian, who is the Nutrition Program Coordinator of Region 6 with National Nutrition Council, Honorable Janet Orestila Garcia, the Mayor of Talibon, Bohol Province, Philippines, Dr. Loreto Roquero, Country Director of Nutrition International, Philippines, Mr. Cecilio Adorna, who is our Senior NTEAM Technical Assistance Provider. Next slide, please. The objectives of the webinar are for the Government of Philippines and Nutrition International Stand Project share their experience with strategies for motivating and mobilizing local authorities to recognize and act upon local and national nutrition priorities and the ways of working with local authorities to shape local nutrition plans and to mobilize and allocate local funding to them. The agenda of this webinar first we will begin with some presentations by our esteemed guests from the government of Philippines, Mr. Gullian and Honorable Mayor of Taliban, Janet Orestila. We will then have a joint presentation by Nutrition International's Philippines Country Director, Dr. Loreto, 
and our project uh, TM, TA provider, Mr. Cecilio Adorno. After which we will move on into our interactive panel discussion and then we'll be closing the webinar. Next slide, please. Without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Mr. Reggie Gullian, who will speak to the nutrition priorities in the Philippines and the National Nutrition Council's relationship with Nutrition International. Before that, a short bio on Mr. Reginaldo. Mr. Reginaldo Gullian, in short, Reggie, to be referred here as, after as Mr. Reggie, is a development professional with more than 30 years of experience in various social development agencies in the areas of program development and management, research, policy advocacy, and networking. Reggie has a master's in public administration with a focus on public policy and program administration from the University of the Philippines. He is currently the regional nutrition program coordinator for nutrition for the region six at the National Nutrition Council where he provides overall direction and supervision on the nutrition program and policy. Importantly, Reggie played a very crucial role in design and implementation of the local government unit mobilization activities, which would be discussed going ahead. Welcome again, Reggie. Over to you. Thank you, Shrikant, for the kind introduction. Courtesies to my fellow panelists, Honorable Mayor Garcia of the Libon Bohol, Dr. Loreto Roquero, Country Director of NI Philippines, and Sir Cesc Adorna, team lead of Alcans International, and to all those who attended, thank you also for the opportunity to share NNC's experience in mobilizing local government units. To put things in perspective, it is important to look at the fact that the Philippines began its devolution and decentralization 30 years ago with the enactment of a more responsive local government code in 1991. Key features include the decentralization of key services such as health, social welfare, and agriculture, and more importantly, a venue for people's participation in local governance via the local development councils and the local special bodies. The Philippine Plan of Action as for Nutrition as the country's policy framework for nutrition recognized the important and crucial role of local government units, thus the recognition that there's a need to ensure the substantial delivery of key services like nutrition are integral to the functioning of LGUs. Next slide, please. Let me just show you the scope and magnitude of local government units in the Philippines. As you can see, we have 81 provinces and their constituent cities, municipalities, and barangays. And from that 81 provinces, 32 provinces were selected as priorities by the Human Development and Poverty Reduction Cluster using the criteria of stunting prevalence, teenage pregnancy, and poverty incidence. Now, the, on to the next slide. The LGU mobilization strategy was also approved and adopted by a resolution by the NNC Governing Board on April 24, 2019, with the following objectives. Next slide, please. Yeah, as, I, as mentioned, the local government unit mobilization is a key program of the Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition for 2016-2022, rather. Next slide, please. These are the objectives of the LG mobilization strategy as approved by the NC Governing Board in 2019. First is the increase in the number of LGUs that implements quality nutrition program. Second, for LGUs to contribute to the delivery of nutrition outcomes. And third, increase LG investments for nutrition. Next slide. The next slide would show us uh, the details of uh, how the operationalization of LG mobilization strategy was carried out 
in partnership with our uh, consultants from Alcans and with the support of Nutrition International. The details of which will be presented by Sirces Adorna, but I would just like to emphasize that we would be able, we would, we are only able to do this recognizing the following elements. One is the extensive support from all stakeholders where we sought, sought to have the ownership and mobilization and broadening of all stakeholders to be able to appreciate and carry out the LGO mobilization strategy. Second is the continuing policy support. Third, incentives and recognition for LGUs and the replication of models of successful LGUs and more importantly, decentralized planning and budgeting for nutrition. This is especially so in the context of a decentralized planning and budgeting scenario. With this, the National Nutrition Council invested 20, 20 million pesos in a series of planning workshops that resulted to the identification of LGU investments amounting to around 800 million pesos for the period 2020 up to 2022, covering 26 provinces. We would have been unable to do all of this without the support of our partners, mainly our local government unit partners, and also support from the Nutrition International, UNICEF, Alcans, HKI, and other uh, stakeholders that we were able to uh, mobilize along the course of these uh, activities and projects. With all of this, it is my hope that I was able to provide you with the overall context with which the LGU mobilization strategy employed by NNC under the current PIPAN and how it applies in the Philippine context as well. Thank you. Over to you, Shrikan. Thank you, Reggie, for giving us such a comprehensive overview of the NNC's priorities and how Nutrition International has been able to support the country in reaching these goals. We will now hear from the Honorable Janet Orestila Garcia to get the perspective from a local chief executive on mobilizing for nutrition at the local level. A short brief on Honorable Janet Orestila Garcia, hereafter to be referred as Janet. Janet was elected as a mayor of municipality of Taliban, Bohol province in May 2019. Janet as a Bachelor of Arts Bachelor of Arts in Mass Communication at St. Teresa's College, Cebu City, and completed Bachelor of Law at Southwestern University, Finma, Cebu City. Welcome again, Janet. Over to you. Janet? Uh, Janet, we can't hear you. Hi, everyone. We seem Hi. to have some technical difficulties reaching Janet at this time. So we will move on to Dr. Loretto and Sess's presentations. Um, Shrikant, if we can introduce sure. Dr. Loretto. Perfect. Thank you so much. We'll try to get sure. in touch with Janet. Apologies. Thank you, Jess. Okay. Uh, we hope the issues with uh, Honorable Mayor Janet is, will be resolved soon and we'll be hearing from her. We'll now hear from Dr. Loreto and Mr. Cecilio Adorna on the work that Nutrition International has supported. A short brief on Dr. Loreto. Dr. Loreto is B. Roquero is the country director for Nutrition International in Philippines. He is a public health specialist with over 20 years of program and technical experience in health and nutrition. He has a keen interest in the field of maternal, adolescent, and child health, also having gained vast experience working for improving reproductive health, HIV AIDS, health system strengthening, program strategy, design and implementation, and evidence-based advocacy and policy dialogue. 
Prior to joining Nutrition International, Dr. Loreto has worked in a technical lead capacity for organizations such as FHI360 Philippines, Pathfinder International in Vietnam, UNFPA in Lavopedia, ASEAN Secretariat in Indonesia, Engender Health, and the Philippines National AIDS Council. Welcome, Dr. Loreto. Next slide, please. Mr. Cecilio Adorno, he is the lead consultant of the NTEAM TA providers in Philippines, working with the National Nutrition Council and other stakeholders to advance the nutrition agenda in the country. Mr. Cess, in short, studied economics at the University of the Philippines School of Economics and Public Administration at Harvard Kennedy School of Government. He has four decades of experience, including 28 years with UNICEF and other UN agencies in strategic planning, leading and managing organizational and social change in the areas of child rights and poverty reduction, including food security and nutrition across five continents, including his own country, the Philippines. Cess and his wife, Luzetta, reside in Quezon City, enjoying semi-retired life with their children and grandchildren. Welcome again, Cess. Over to you, Dr. Loreto. Thank you, Srikan. Can we have the next slide? Okay. So for this presentation, next slide, please. I will start this presentation with an overview of NI's technical assistance support to the NNC followed by the synergies of the TA with the NI country program. NI's collaborative work with the government started in 2016, responding together with UNICEF to the request of the National Nutrition Council to conduct the nutrition situation analysis to build consensus around nutrition problems and priorities. This analysis guided the formulation of the Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition 2017 to 2022, which was refined and finalized in consultation with a broad group of nutrition stakeholders and sectors at national and subnational levels. In 2017, NNC requested further TA from NI and UNICEF to support the rollout of the PPAN at various levels and advance priority nutrition actions through collective and collaborative engagements of sectors and partners. The PPAN was translated for application at the regional level, cascading to the provinces and their constituent towns and cities. Recognizing the importance of, important role of local government units in nutrition program implementation, the mobilization of LGUs was a strategic thrust for operationalization of the PPAN. In 2019, after the midterm review and updating of the PPAN for the remaining three-year implementation period, NISTA to the NNC was extended for the period January 2020 to May 2021 to further accelerate PPAN implementation by furthering LGU mobilization actions. Next slide, please. NI in the Philippines works primarily with the national and local governments to enhance, expand, and accelerate the delivery of crucial nutrition interventions. Implementation of NI country, NI country program is strengthened by LGU mobilization, leveraging on advocacy with governors and mayors on why they need to invest in nutrition, in provincial and municipal multi-sectoral planning and budget resourcing workshops, helping to promote ownership and sustainability of first 1,000 days interventions and NI project areas. Mobilization activities are further cascaded by the NI country program to the level of the barangays, actively engaging the community leaders, frontline workers, and community members in F1KD activities. The details of the TE support will be presented by SES. So over to you, SES. Greetings from Manila. Earlier, Mr. Guillen alluded to five sets of actions and processes undertaken by the National Nutrition Council to advance local government mobilization. And this include decentralization of planning and budgeting for nutrition, dissemination of models of successful LGUs, building broader national and subnational ownership, securing policy support and making incentives and recognition work. Our experience tells us that no single bullet was responsible for the advances made by the government on LGU mobilization. The gains made were due to these five distinct but synergistic actions. In providing technical assistance, we followed several principles, broadening ownership, 
strengthening capacity, gender sensitivity, as well as building sustainability all along respecting principle of government leadership. We found that these principles could be pursued while producing TA deliverables. In this presentation, I will include, include a few illustrations on how these principles will built in the products and processes. What advances have been made in LGU mobilization? Um, we've established policy and program framework We've developed tools and processes for sustained LGU mobilization and strengthened gender sensitivity in local plans and budgets. We made extensive coverage of local government units integration of nutrition in their local plans and budgets and built ownership and co-ownership of nutrition among a wide variety of stakeholders at national and subnational levels. We finally strengthened capacity at the NNC and its stakeholders and LGUs in areas covered on LGU mobilization. What has been the contribution of the TA providers to LGU mobilization? One, we have facilitated the conceptualization of various products and processes and engendered a participatory process of the development of such products with its technical and management counterparts at the NNC and stakeholders. We have contributed to effective advocacy and mobilization for policy support of critical national government agencies, which include the interior and local government and budget departments and others. Identified entry points and opportunities for strengthening LGU mobilization. And finally, we've integrated sustainability, gender transformation, ownership, and capacity strengthening in all the work undertaken in LGU mobilization. In addition to the first two lessons referred to earlier, there are three more lessons that we can share. Early successes proved to be important confidence building measures for the TAN TA team with the NNC counterparts and senior management, there's facilitating future work. I'll come back to that. LGU mobilization process had to be adapted, especially during shocks, and as the team discovered more elements that can strengthen the potential for success. Notwithstanding these gains, the work on LGU mobilization will undoubtedly leave a few unfinished business or remaining priorities for the next years and the success of PPAN. To explain lesson three, you can see in the slide that the 17 regional plans of action for nutrition and the compendium of actions on nutrition were produced in record time, which earned good brownie points early in the relationship, facilitating the PAN's team future work. I will now present the different actions and processes, and we'll begin with the decentralization of the PPAN, the National Plan 2017-2022. With broadened ownership achieving the PPAN formulation, the NNC proceeded with the formulation of 17 regional plans of action for nutrition and with the interior and local government, the process of integrating nutrition in local plans and budgets followed, covering sizable numbers of provinces, municipalities and cities from exercises in 2018, 2019 and 2020. Below the orange horizontal line are supportive actions a manual for running the workshops, including a costing template, proved to be excell excellent facilitating tools. A national and regional team of planning facilitators were trained to conduct the workshops. Planning specialists from the interior and local government and provincial planning and development coordinators across the country were oriented on the integrating nutrition in plans and budgets and the imperatives on investing in nutrition. NNC regional offices led the 2020 online annual investment program planning in 26 provinces covering 369 LGUs and will do so in the years to come. The LGUs covered in 2018, 2019 and 2020 have gained considerable capacity in integrating nutrition in local plans and budgets. Important to mention is the proposal for nutrition budget tagging and tracking system in the Philippines, 
which provides a basis for the NNC to build a system with the interior and local government and budget departments to increase accountability of LGUs and sector agencies for their nutrition budgets and expenditure. Further to increasing account sustainability, the NNC and the interior and local government is equipping all our 1,715 LGUs in the country with a thematic guide on mainstreaming nutrition in plans and budgets, an accompanying document to the interior's comprehensive development planning illustrative guide, which is the principal reference document of LGUs for planning and budgeting. The Compendium of Actions on Nutrition, launched in 2018, provide, providing models of scaling up nutrition actions across various LGU types and income classes, and the Compendium of Local Ordinances on Nutrition, with both its online and printed form, are very important tools of LGU mobilization. Both featured female local chief executives, outstanding female nutrition action officers, and various models of nutrition specific and nutrition sensitive programs that factor gender equity and gender transformation. The NNC with support from the interior and local government, health and the leagues of local governments convened major advocacy events to build ownership of the PPAN. I will, only see, I will only mention event number two, which secured the support of important governors from priority provinces in the leagues of local governments in scaling up nutrition in local government levels. And item 10, which the interior and local government convened during the pandemic. Below the gray line are actions eight and 12 to 15, listing important peer-to-peer -peer learning approaches for nutrition spearheaded by the NNC with support of partners. Inspired by the success of the Swellig Family Foundation's experience on building leadership and governance on health and nutrition and the NNC's peer learning approaches, the conceptualization of one comprehensive leadership and governance program for nutrition, building on these two experiences with a strong regional platform is actually a work under review. Incentives and recognition are an important part of LGU mobilization. NNC has revised its nutrition reward system to become more encouraging for LGUs to work on improving its nutrition program. The revisions in the MELPI Pro performance monitoring system for LGUs realign its criteria to place emphasis towards outcomes and compliance to quality standards, along with evidence-based validation of plans and budgets, with mentoring through joint discussion for learnings and actions with the local government unit and assess nutrition workers. Work is ongoing in incorporating nutrition in the seal of good local governance, the most LGU coveted award in the Philippines. With the 42 actions and processes that have contributed to advancing LGU mobilization on nutrition in the Philippines, one can say that the LGU mobilization train has left the station. As the NNC Executive Director, Dr. Apet, and our friends at the Swilik Family Foundation just yesterday also said, the, and Mayor Janet re uh, will re-echo today in the presentation, National nutrition outcomes will not be achieved without the ownership of local governments. The LGU mobilization became a program and a strategy in the current PPAN. Implemented and undoubtedly will be an important priority for years to come in the success of PPAN, further deepening and broadening ownership and achieving targeted results. As can be expected, this is work in progress a number of unfinished business or priorities remain for the future, and my colleague and friend, Dr. Loreto, will expound on them shortly. On behalf of the Philippine Technical Assistance Team at Nutrition International, from 2016 into 2021, we thank the NNC and Nutrition International, UNICEF, and many other partners for this opportunity to contribute to the LGU mobilization work. Thank you and good evening. Thank you, Cez. As you have heard, 
The NMC have made good progress in mobilization of local governments to scale up nutrition. The NMC and its stakeholders will need to build on these gains further in the remaining year of the current PPAN and in the implementation of the successor PPAN 2023 to 2028. Several priorities are important to ensure further deepening and broadening of LGU engagement and ownership of the PPAN, and I will describe them as follows. First, the country will need to establish a sustainable system for the nutrition leadership and governance program with the regional platform to systematize the capacity building efforts of NNC and partners for local chief executives and their teams at provincial, city, and municipal levels. Second, we also need to secure nutrition as one of the criteria in the seal of good local governance award of the Department of Interior and Local Governments. The seal is a much coveted award by LGUs and by securing nutrition as one of its criteria, nutrition would be assured very high priority in the plans and budgets of LGUs. Third, the country also needs to establish a nutrition budget tag tracking system, national government agencies, local governments and networks. This will provide data on the budgets allocated first and utilized for nutrition programs, projects, and activities. This data shall be used in further improving the overall program management for nutrition. Fourth, currently there is no reliable system of measuring nutritional outcomes like stunting, wasting, underweight, overweight, and obesity valid at the level of municipality and city, allowing little accountability of local chief executives in terms of nutrition results in their respective LGUs. Complementary strategies to improve the efficiency and accuracy of the OPT system, factoring the recommendations of partners and earlier studies conducted on the OPT Plus will generate needed estimates of the anthropometric status and progress of children under five years old. Finally, the nutrition community needs to maximize the first 1,000 days law, piggybacking on the full implementation of the universal healthcare law and optimization of nutrition in the interagency task force on zero hunger. The enactment of the F1KD law already provides for the LGU formulation of LNAPs, their integration in the local development plans and annual investment programs, including the monitoring and evaluation of these LNAPs. Nutrition needs to be positioned or mainstreamed in relevant provisions of the universal healthcare law to realize nutrition-related outcomes. For example, nutrition services could be integrated in the overall UHC package of services to be delivered through the province or citywide healthcare provider network. And nutrition interventions integrated into the local investment plan for health could be used for obtaining funds from the special health funds established in each province or city. The Interagency Task Force on Zero Hunger had formulated and issued the National Food Policy in January 2021. K result area number three of the policy is focused on ensuring nutrition adequacy. For intensified LGU mobilization, among others, it recommends that LGU set a budget floor for nutrition to ensure LGU investments and the issuance of joint memo circular by local government, budget, and health departments containing a policy on no nutrition budget, no approval of the LGU development plans. Thank you and back to you, Sir Khan. Thank you both for that overview of the support that the TAN project has provided in Philippines and what Nutrition International's goals are for the future. Before we move on, I would ask all participants to please post any questions for the speakers in the chat box and we shall take note of them for the upcoming interactive panel discussion. I understand Honorable Mayor Janet is back with us. Let's hear from her to get the perspective from a local chief executive on mobilizing for nutrition at the local level. Janet, welcome back and over to you. Good evening. Sorry for some typical uh, problem. To my fellow presenters, hosts, all attendees, good evening. This humble representation of more than 70,000 good people of the municipality of Talibon, the birthplace of one of the presidents of the Republic of the Philippines, President Carlos Polistico Garcia, classified as first class municipality mainly composed of 25 barangays, 17 mainland and eight island barangays, will always be graciously grateful for this most opportune time you have unselfishly extended. I take pride in sharing our perspective and views to the rest of the world. Even in the face of this global pandemic, which led to detrimental effects to our routine, have remained imperative. But even so, our main source of living, both marine and farming with God's grace, have been economically stable. 
I owe it to my drive driven, hardworking, and committed constituents. With all humility, I've been constantly immersing with the situations and work of actions that would mitigate and address as far as nutrition issues are concerned. Under my administration, I deeply understand the essential role of nutrition in economic development. The outcome set in the Philippine Plan Act of Action for Nutrition can only be achieved if all local chief executives in 1,715 local governments in the Philippines owning the malnutrition problem in their respective LGUs and committing to invest in nutrition. Holding this belief, I work on sustaining the achievements of my predecessor mayors who led Dalibon to where it is today. Our municipality has been a nutrition honor awardee of the NNC, the highest award of excellence for nutrition programming, which we have retained for 16 years now since 2004. In 2018, our municipality was featured together with 10 other local governments in the Compendium of Actions on Nutrition publication. Here, we shared how we gained and sustained our achievements over 20 years under three different mayors. When I was elected in 2019, I wanted to maintain Taliban success in nutrition during my term. One of my early engagement in nutrition was on August 9, 2019, with NNC and the International Technical As and Nutrition International Technical Assistance Providers who visited our municipality to orient me on the role of Taliban as peer learning hub for nutrition. Together with my planning team, I was briefed on the imperatives and investing in nutrition. Since then, I placed nutrition as part of my priority agenda and many further developments happened. In June 2020, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, our municipality pursued the integration of nutrition in our 2021 annual investment program with online support from NNC and the uh, National uh, Nutrition International Technical Assistance Provider. The exercise was a pilot run that trailblazed a series of online workshops in 15 other regions in the Philippines. Following the workshop, I approve a total of 4.9 million pesos for the Municipal Nutrition Program in 2021, from which 2.5 million pesos is allocated to establish a dietary supplementation program for pregnant women and children 6 to 23 months in all our barangays. Our program takes inspiration from a Labon city that mobilizes carinderias, or known as neighborhood food stalls for service delivery. In all nutrition planning exercises, we benefited from guiding issuance provided by the Department of the Interior and local government and the Department of Budget and Management. Just as how we learned from the other LGUs, Talibon has also shared good practices to visiting LGUs. For us LGUs, having learning models is beneficial. Thus, we are thankful for the support of the NNC and NI in establishing an LGU to LGU peer learning program, which aims to systematize knowledge sharing with other LGUs aspiring to excel in nutrition programming. Local legislation also has a huge contribution to advancing nutrition. Recognizing this, in 2020, I worked with the members of the Municipal Nutrition Council and the Legislative Council to build sustainability to our nutrition program. With the support of NNC and NI provider, we develop a comprehensive nutrition program ordinance which contains key provision and component programs. Strategies to expand ownership across barangays, coordinating and implementing mechanisms and financing. This ordinance was passed on 20, September 2020, and I am told that this, is, this ordinance is the first of its kind in the entire country. With these assets, I look forward to mobilizing other LGUs towards investing and scaling up nutrition, especially with the pandemic and the additional budgets provided by the national government LGU starting 2022, where we aim to use part of these windfall resources to sustain and improve our local nutrition program. Local governments must respond to the call of scaling up nutrition by establishing the required structures, providing the needed investments, and implementing programs that ensures that everyone, especially the women and the children in their first 1,000 days of their lives, will achieve optimum nutrition and live more productive and help your lives. Thank you and good evening.
Thank you, Mayor, for giving us an insight into what it really means at the local level to start mobilizing to improve nutrition. I would now like to hand over to Sergio Texira, TAN Project Strategic Advisor, Knowledge, Learning and Communication, to begin our much-awaited interactive panel discussion. Welcome, Sergio, and over to you. Thanks so much, uh, Shrikant. Uh, and uh, first of all, thank you so much to our four presenters. Um, I personally found the presentations really rich. Uh, so thank you, all four of you, and especially thank you to Mayor Garcia for having worked through your technical issues. I'm really glad you were able to, to present and to join the panel now. So all four of our presenters will participate in today's uh, panel discussion. And I'd like to thank participants for some of the questions you've already posted in the chat box. But I'd uh, like to remind everyone uh, to continue posting uh, questions in the chat box as we proceed in the discussion. And we'll try to come to your questions as we move along. So to kick off the discussion, I just wanted to say that, I mean, we've seen that the mobilization of local government units for implementing the PPAN really entailed, I mean, so many different individual pieces of work uh, that came together in, in a sort of a coherent LGU mobilization strategy. There were so many different pieces that I thought we could start by trying to explore uh, a couple of them in a little bit more detail, because obviously in the presentations, we couldn't really explore the, um, each one uh, that much. So I wanted maybe to start uh, by asking Mayor Garcia to tell us a little bit more about how the award system uh, motivated you uh, towards the, the cause of nutrition. And if you were involved in that award system, uh, and is this award system something that you think other countries should consider launching to encourage local authorities to become more engaged in nutrition? Over to you, May Garcia. Um, good evening again. Yes, it is very much important for us to have a system in, uh, in the uh, application or in the establishment of nutrition in every LGUs. Uh, example, in our municipality, uh, we really uh, use and also uh, implement and ask the participation of every barangays for us to uh, essentially and to us for us also to work uh, hand in hand with the barangay level so that we can implement uh, perfectly the programs of the local level to the uh, constituents by the help of the barangay. So uh, for me, the most important system that we use here in the municipality is by using the uh, barangay level so that um, they can participate and so that uh, they can um, actively uh, uh, participate and also th they are more knowledgeable of the people in their barangay so that uh, they can keep on giving us the detailed information of the problems in nutrition in their respective barangay. So um, the, the um, number one factor of um, uh, effective uh, implementation of the system, a nutrition system in the municipality of Taliban is mainly on the very supportive also uh, participation of the barangay level, sir. Thanks, for, thanks so much for that uh, explanation about the involvement of the barangay level. And I wanted to ask uh, you another, a second question, Mayor Garcia, around the award system, the system of giving uh, awards and recognition um, for um, local authorities who have made a special effort uh, in nutrition. Um, I know that you participated in that system and, 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 and your, um, uh, your, your area has won awards. So I wanted, I wanted to, to you to tell us a little bit about how you found those awards motivating. Um, and if you think that those awards are something that other countries should also try to implement try to have to offer? Um, it is a big honor for a municipality to receive an award. Uh, last year, uh, the other year, 2019, we received the Seal of Good Local Governance. And one of the reasons why we received that one because of our uh, implementation of uh, the nutrition uh, program. So the effective implementation of the nutrition program in Taliban is one of 
our asset, why we receive the highest recognition of a municipality, which is the seal of good local governance. We are inspired by that because not all municipalities were given the opportunity to receive such kind of award. And it also comes with it a big price, an amount of uh, a big uh, amount of price, which will be used as our uh, our fund for any project that will be uh, that will benefit the different barangays in our municipality. Uh, that award system is beneficial for me because it will encourage every municipality to really work hard and to really give their whole effort so that they will achieve their goal in not only in nutrition but also in other aspects. And it will also encourage the barangay level to also work hand in hand with the municipality because the award that will be given to every municipality will be also applied to the different barangays. So I think uh, that is one of the reasons why uh, every municipality will really work hard to uh, come up with a good program in different areas, especially nutrition, because uh, the award system will not only bring uh, the price, the price is just a bonus, but the, the prestige and the honor that it will give to the municipality will be the biggest prize that we can give to our constituents. And if the award will be known to the all, to our constituents, they will also be inspired and they will also be, uh, be, uh, be, be, be active in participating our programs, especially in our nutrition program in the municipality. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that uh, detail, Mayor, and uh, for letting us know, yeah, that, that these awards come with a, a financial prize, which then, can then be used for, uh, for more projects, uh, and definitely something that uh, maybe other countries can consider uh, also implementing. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Mayor Garcia. Um, I'd now like to turn to, to Reggie, Reggie Guillen. Uh, Reggie, I'd like to ask you, um, what challenges, and we've heard a lot of things, uh, I hope we've heard a lot about things that went well, um, uh, but I wanted to ask you also a little bit about challenges. So what challenges and issues did you face in, um, in, the, in the decentralized planning and budgeting for nutrition? Uh, what was hardest and, and how did you go about trying to overcome uh, that challenge? Thank you, Sergio. Uh, I think what top of my head, uh, based on our experience with regards to the in facilitating the workshop that we've started since 2018, one of the major challenges is to be able to reach out to all the LGUs in the countries. As you can see, I have uh, shown a slide on the magnitude of LGUs in the Philippines where you have 81 provinces. And we're, we're, while we are confident to say that we are able to reach about 75% of the provinces uh, by now, uh, there are still a lot of LGUs that are uh, that needed to be reached in terms of planning workshops that uh, should cover the term of the local chief executive no? starting in 2020 up to 2022. The second would be ensuring that the program projects and activities that have been identified by these LGUs will really be integrated into the annual investment programs. Uh, you have to separate the PPA from the actual budgeted programs that will be integrated into the AIP or the annual investment programming of LGUs. While we are confident to also say that we have uh, received submissions from LGUs through our regional offices when I was still with the NPPD of an amount reaching about 800 million as compared to the 20 million that has been invested into the series of planning workshops. The, the next challenge there would be looking into the tracking and uh, tagging of this budget in terms of the actual expenditure made by the LGUs covering nutrition programs. I think those two are the key challenges that I can think of right now. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, thanks so much for that, uh, Reggie. And maybe um, building on, on what you just told us, I'd, I'd go on to CES. And I wanted to ask CES, um, what plans are there for integrating uh, nutrition into plans and budgets for 2022? 
So could you tell us a little bit about how this, how we hope that these, this approach and this effort will be sustained in time? Um, and maybe also how, how the Philippines intend to reach those LGUs that still need uh, to be reached. Over to you, Cesc. Um, there are multiple synergy, synergistic actions that need to be continued and others that may have to be uh, introduced. Um, first and foremost, let's uh, begin by saying that our regional offices of the National Nutrition Council already have full capacity to interact and interface with the local governments in their regions in terms of integrating nutrition in plans and budgets. So there are also tools that have been developed that will be available to them and their uh, collaborators, stakeholders in the region. What would add to um, the recipe, I would say, would be uh, one, if um, nutrition can really be fully be considered in the Seal of Good Local Governance Award of, uh, as Dr. Loretta said, this is the most uh, coveted award by the LGU. So once that's happened in the next year or two, uh, LG nutrition will not be a very um, a strange subject for a good number of LGU. It will be very popular uh, to the local government units as they uh, attempt to actually win this SDLG. Second, very important, is I think we need to develop models from LGUs themselves in the coming year, particularly this year and next year, in being able to optimize and maximize the use of the windfall uh, resources that will be available to our local governments coming from the Mandanas Garcia um, a ruling uh, from the Supreme Court. This will add considerable uh, resources for the LGUs of all types. And Honorable uh, Janet Garcia already alluded to perhaps in their planning for 2022, this will be factored in their consideration with the Legislative Assembly. I think it will be very important to expand the reach of the Nutrition Leadership and Governance Program that our colleagues from the Swellig Family Foundation, along with the efforts of the NNC to really um, establish strongly our peer-to-peer -peer approaches from the likes of Nutrition Champions to the Learning Hub, to the shepherding uh, system of uh, the uh, National Nutrition Council, all of those uh, being placed at the disposal of the regions, uh, creating a strong regional platform will be a way forward. I think what Dr. Loreto has alluded to in the work of the, um, of the um, uh, workings of the law, the Republic Act 11148, the um, first 1,000 days law, is that uh, there are already provisions that local nutrition action plan are a must in terms of uh, the requirement for a comprehensive development plan. And this was re-echoed re -echoed by one of the DI local government and interior um, issuances. So we are already graduated on that one, hopefully. But what we really look at as the World Bank uh, report yesterday um, clearly um, Immense, um, explicitly stated, one of the strong points going forward in 2022 onwards to the success of PPAN is ensuring the uh, adequate financing of the plan. So I think these are areas that we can work on in the national budget tagging and tracking system, if established as proposed, will be a very important tool towards that, which will help the NNC not only look at what's allocated, but what's expended, both at sector agencies, but also among our local government units. The very important tool that's coming up, and I'm very excited uh, with this, is what was shown in my one of the slides, which is the accompaniment document 
of the Illustrative Guide to Comprehensive Development Planning in the Philippines. This is a product that the NNC and NI and other partners have worked uh, over time. And this is coming out in July. This is really, really, really going to be a sustaining factor of the efforts of the NNC in integrating nutrition in local planning. This will be a constant source, a reference, a permanent reference of the LGUs uh, as they march through 2022 and the successor of Tupan. Over to you, Sergio. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks so much, Tess, for that and for clearly laying out that uh, sustainability is, is a complex matter and lots of things have to happen in parallel uh, for these efforts to, to continue. So, uh, but great also that there's additional funding coming up, uh, more policy instruments. So thanks so much uh, for that detail. Um, now that we're on the topic of sustainability, um, I wanted to turn our attention a little bit to the pandemic. Uh, we've had some questions coming in uh, from participants about how the pandemic has affected um, the LGU mobilization uh, for nutrition and affected the implementation of the PPAN. And lots of questions around what measures were taken to try and sustain uh, the implementation of the PPAN uh, and not let it be too derailed uh, by the pandemic. Um, so maybe um, I could turn that question over probably to any of you, but maybe, uh, uh, maybe Reggie um, would like to tell us a little bit, and, and maybe then we could also ask uh, Dr. Loretto for, for his opinion um, about how, you know, how, the, how the pandemic uh, affected programming, uh, but then what measures were taken to try and uh, maintain some continuity in programming. So maybe to Reggie first, so, yeah. um, and then over to Dr. Loretto, or maybe on the same question. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you, Sergio. I think the, that question was also posted in one of the chat box. Exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, allow me to give my answer on it. First, I think with regards to the recasting of the Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition, uh, bearing in mind the impact of COVID-19, it has been undertaken because the midterm review happened around middle of 2019, ah, third quarter or the fourth quarter of 2019, around October. Uh, the, re the refinement of the documents took a while longer. And with the onset of the pandemic in early 2020, the National Nutrition Council uh, tried to factor in the possible impact of COVID-19 by recasting the target, considering the National Nutrition Survey results in 2019, which accounts for 28.8% of the prevalence of stunting, uh, down from a base from, from the 30.3% 30, 30 in 2018, uh, based on the NNS survey. So that was what has been factored in as the, tar the new target for 2022 from the original target of 21.4 uh, as uh, indicated in the PPAN. So that's that's the first one. I think we are able to uh, submit that uh, recasting of target in the Philippine Development Plan that has also been reviewed and updated by the National Economic and Development Authority. But uh, in terms of uh, the LGU mobilization strategy, I'm clearly aware and we have done this also prior to the conduct of the A online AIP workshop integration uh, in the middle of 2020, where we also incorporated inputs with regards to the uh, possible impact of COVID-19 in terms of programming and planning of LGUs. There were few improvements in the presentation and inputs during the workshops that factored in the possible impact of COVID-19 and how LGUs can uh, adjust to it by uh, scaling up interventions for the first 1,000 days as a way of also building up immunities of uh, not only the target groups of children and mothers, but also the, just the citizenry in general. Um, the other action points undertaken with regards to COVID-19 is also related to how the agency coordinated its actions with regards to nutrition and emergency, becoming up with a series of advisories 
uh, that were communicated to local government units, especially during the times of a uh, series of community quarantines where there will be impending uh, um, impending uh, shortage of food access for communities. And so the advisories would enable LGUs to uh, provide more nutritious food during uh, community quarantines and lockdowns, and also access food from the local products of farmers in, in the respective localities. Uh, that was a subject of the advisories that NNC issued as part of its COVID response. Third, and this is, I would like to put emphasis on this, the implementation of the uh, dietary supplementation program for pregnant women uh, in the target areas of the HDPRC or the Human Development Poverty Reduction Clusters is also aimed at NNC's COVID response to ensure that there will be uh, uh, actions that will mitigate the impact of food insecurity at the household level as an impact of COVID-19. I will stop there, Sergio, and over to you. Uh, thanks so much, Reggie, uh, for that detail. And maybe you I'll allow me. pass over to, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to um, uh, build on, I think, Reggie's points and mention maybe just two additional actions one of which I really salute our, our regional nutrition program coordinators because amidst the pandemic onslaught in the second quarter of 2020, they decided to actually go online to make sure that the momentum of the 2018-2019 uh, decentralized workshops for integrating nutrition at the planning level of the LGUs would not stop. So with the support of a online experience that Talibon did with uh, the regional office of Cebu, um, NNC was able to actually support the uh, uh, many other regions that followed suit to be able to cover about, uh, I believe, 26 provinces. So that is something that's um, quite valiant, but also a, a very adaptive uh, action that has been taken by our RNPCs with some support from the uh, country office, uh, the central office. The second one, which I, I think is also quite brave, is the face-to-face -face advocacy meetings with LGUs that had limited quarantine restrictions due to the pandemic. This was done by a number of our um, uh, field officers of the NNC. So I, I think this is in the spirit of not losing momentum of the local government mobilization. The rest, I think, have been taken off by Reggie and I will stop there. Over to you. Thanks so much, Cess, uh, for that extra detail. And I was going to hand over to Dr. Loretto to also um, maybe talk to us a little bit about, from the perspective that you saw of nutrition programs, uh, what were some of the, the, the challenges and what were some of the adaptations made uh, in the face of the pandemic? Over to you, Dr. Loretto. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, COVID really has posed uh, very important challenges in service delivery in the, at the level of the municipalities and barangays. We have seen health workers given new tasks in terms of supporting uh, COVID responses. You know? So they were taken away from their work in terms of nutrition delivery, but they were tasked like to identify, to isolate uh, uh, COVID cases in the community. So their tasks have changed during the lockdown period. Second, we have seen significant decline also in service delivery because of the lockdowns themselves. Many were activities which are group activities were not allowed. Uh, second, we have we also seen this initial fear of, uh, for example, pregnant women mothers not to come for services. So their health seeking behavior had been affected because, their, because of their initial fear of uh, getting COVID infection when they go out of their, of their households. What, what we also saw was that budgets for nutrition were reallocated 
to support procurement, for example, of COVID supplies, you know, and that has, that has affected the implementation of nutrition interventions in those areas. So what we have initially done was basically there are this counterpart of interagency task force for COVID. You know, there are counterparts of that at the level of the province and the municipality. What has been done is basically our nutrition action officers, our municipal health officers, you know, had been part of these meetings and they were trying, they had advocated, you know, that it is important. Nutrition should be an important component of the COVID response recovery and rehabilitation efforts. It's not taking away from nutrition, but nutrition is an integral part of that response, you know. And uh, that has been, that has been the work that has been initiated in the project areas that we had working. So they have opened up these discussions why it's still important to continue to investing in nutrition in this time of the pandemic. Back to you, Sergio. Uh, thanks so much, Dr. Loretto and, uh, and Cess and Reggie for, for your, your three different perspectives uh, on, on, on some of the challenges that uh, the pandemic uh, created and also how programs adapted and how you've adapted. So uh, thank you so much for that. I wanted to... Uh, Change, uh, change our focus. Yes, hello. Can I just make a point? Of Two course, Reggie, go ahead. I forget. One, uh, I, I'd like to also mention again what I think Sir Sess mentioned earlier in his presentation, that there's already an illustrative guide being vetted and ready for approval by the interior and local department, uh, local government department that can also be used by the local government units as a way of institutionalizing the processes that have been undertaken with regards to the LG mobilization strategy, particularly the planning workshops and the integration of nutrition in the annual investment program. And we thank all again the Nutrition International and our CANS team for, support, for supporting this initiative and making sure that there's, this will be institutionalized. And more importantly, the Department of Interior and Local Government uh, Department. The other thing that I would like to put forward before I uh, it slipped my mind is the fact that the NNC also was able to develop the whole process that we went through and the tools that have been developed into an online e-learning tools and methodologies that can also be used uh, by LGUs henceforth with regards to the uh, nutrition program management that has been up updated based on the experience in the LG mobilization strategy. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks so much, Reggie. And, uh, and there have been uh, several questions posted about institutionalization and about maintaining uh, momentum um, after elections. And so thank you uh, uh, for what you just uh, told us because that opens up uh, actually for my next, uh, my next question. So maybe over, back over to you, uh, Mayor Garcia. Um, some participants are asking us what measures beyond, uh, in addition to legislation, do you think uh, would be important for maintaining um, the momentum for nutrition, for making sure that nutrition continues to be high on the agenda after the next elections. So as people change, as uh, mayors change, uh, and uh, all local authorities you know, change over time, what do you think would be a couple of important things so that newly elected officials um, continue the, 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 the nutrition efforts that were implemented by their predecessors? Um, thank you, sir. Actually, the very uh, important factor that Taliban has already made is the ordinance. At least they have already a guide for them to follow, even if um, there will be a new set of leaders in the future. Aside from that, uh, to maintain the momentum of Taliban in promoting nutrition, most of our midwives or uh, Taliban has 25 barangays. And I am proud to say that all the barangays had each midwives and BNS. And to assure the sustainability and to assure that uh, the records will be permanently uh, 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 looked and checked. Most of our midwives are now 
you know, regular uh, items of the municipality, meaning they are already regular in their jobs. And also we see to it that um, we are trying that all the 25 midwives will be uh, given uh, I, an item to be regular in their job so that uh, even if there will be change in the sets of leaders, the midwives will remain in their position so that it will not affect the, the momentum of our, our nutrition program and, and our, our goal in achieving the highest level in uh, the prop, uh, progress of nutrition here in Taliban. Aside from that, we are really supporting and giving attention and uh, how shall I say this, appreciation to our BNS, even if they are just um, appointed by our uh, local or our barang and our barangay captains, but we see to it that the local government unit um, can provide them uh, additional uh, additional uh, uh, honoraria, I think that is the, 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 the proper term. Just this year, uh, it increased the, uh, the honoraria of the BNS to 600 pesos per month each BNS so that they will be more um, uh, inspired and they will be willing to, to exert their effort because as what Dr. Loreto said a while ago, the midwives, the uh, barangay health workers, the BNS, uh, this time of pandemic are um, the, 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 their obligations and their works are uh, added because of the protocols, the pandemic, uh, the pandemic uh, issues. That's why we here in the local government unit of Taliban, we see to it that even if the pandemic is still in our community, we see to it that our our uh, strive and our actions, our uh, activities in nutrition are not affected. Although there are some because we cannot uh, meet our our uh, constituents because of the social distancing issues, and so. Uh, we try to see to it that our BNS, our BHWs, our midwives will have the house-to-house -house visitation, especially to those pregnant women and to those uh, households who had, uh, who has uh, babies or minors. So um, I think the best that uh, an LGU, for me, the best that an LGU can offer so that the, the, the practices of nutrition will not be uh, will not be weakened even if there is a change of leaders, there's a change of um, the administrators is for us to have uh, permanent people that will look into every barangay for them to continuously report monthly, to continuously check every single details that our municipal needs so that we can see what the priorities that are needed in every barangay to support the nutrition problem of our constituents, sir. Thank you. Thanks for, so much for that, Mayor Garcia, uh, and about the key point of making sure that positions are, are permanent, uh, because without uh, a workforce, <laughs> yeah, of course, it's very hard to, to implement nutrition actions. So, and maybe building on uh, your point there, maybe, Cess, um, taking a more national view, could you um, maybe tell us a little bit more about how capacity uh, was has been developed over the last few years uh, through this um, LGU mobilization strategy? Uh, we just heard from Mayor Garcia that several positions were institutionalized, well, staff were hired, positions were institutionalized. So has the, have we seen the same thing happening uh, in many different parts of the country? Uh, and beyond having more staff, uh, have we also seen um, Capacity development, as in new skills, uh, new attitudes uh, through through the planning processes. Over to you, Ses. Yeah. Uh, before I get into that uh, most recent question, let me just build on what Mayor has said. Um, going through the election period next year, the most important, uh, I believe, element for really making nutrition. A, a highly important, uh, a very important uh, subject for LGUs is um, to re-echo what, uh, re-echoing what uh, Ernie Garilao said yesterday in our World Bank webinar. 
uh, I think it's important to have a national consensus among major stakeholders that we have really an emergency uh, in nutrition, malnutrition, and in particular our stunting levels, uh, owing much also to the pandemic. Because prior to the pandemic, there have been improvements in both wasting and stunting, although the, lat the latter would be more moderate uh, improvement. So I think a national um, discussion, a, a national summit, if you wish, uh, looking at the issue of, of what do we do with this? How do we reach what Peru has reached uh, in a short period of time, what other countries in the region have reached in the same period of time as Peru? So I think that discussion needs to happen and the financing has got to be there. The national legislations have got to be even more, made more robust. So I, I, I think that that part has to be there. In terms of capacity, we believe that over the last four years, capacity strengthening has happened, but you know it is really uh, like uh, a glass half full, half, uh, half, half, half empty, that we need to keep building on. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, proof that capacity has been built. Uh, the, our regional offices run the online workshops largely by themselves. So that is something really remarkable. The Sunja annual exercises where we used to have kind of heavy footprints that was done uh, on their on their own um, a leadership and, and, and direct uh, a workings of our National Nutrition Council, the last ones that we that were uh, implemented. Other than that, I think what we have seen in the planning and budgeting workshops on the ground is that as we move through from 2018, 2019, and 2020, it became much easier uh, to facilitate these workshops, which meant that uh, our LGUs have been building really familiarity and mastery of the planning process. The tools will help. But what would really uh, be very important as we go through 2022 and the success of PFAN is really looking at uh, an overall human resource landscape uh, for nutrition. That's very important to tie up with the universal healthcare law, which provides for that uh, overall uh, review of our capacity to deliver health and nutrition services. So I think that is in order for us uh, in the country to actually undertake and build nutrition as part of that process in the universal health care. There is so much to uh, gain from nutrition being built side by side as part of the whole family of the uh, actions around universal health care. I think capacity is, is, uh, is a matter that local chief executives are able to build. So I'll go back to the issue of get engaging, roping in, building ownership of the malnutrition problem and the nutrition solutions of local chief executive is a prima, is, a, is, a, is, a, is the first step uh, towards ensuring our uh, capacities built across the board. So very clearly, the nutrition governance leadership program, along with the peer-to-peer -peer building leadership executive uh, commitments is a very, very important and permanent part of the solution towards capacity building. What we have seen is when LCEs take the cudgel and really move forward, everything is actually resolved from the multisectoral requirement of a nutrition program to the human resource requirement of the nutrition program in the world, to financing, they're going down to the village levels. All of these are addressed by wonderful executives at the local chief, local government level, once they are engaged and once they recognize that malnutrition is indeed a human development problem, part of the Philippine Development Program, as well as the SDG. So over to you, Sergio. Thanks so much, Cess, uh, for that. And I'm, I'm gonna have to um, ask one last question, uh, sadly, because um, uh, we're coming to, to, to the end of our uh, time for the panel discussion. But I wanted to ask uh, Dr. Loretto, uh, if you could tell us a little bit about how you see 
the collaboration um, with the NNC uh, in the future, right, going, going forward. Um, but also, yeah, I guess two questions. First of all, how you think that these years of technical assistance around the PPAN, uh, support to the NNC and the LGU mobilization, how do you see that this has strengthened other NI programs uh, that NI is implementing uh, together with the, the NNC. Um, and then how do you see the NNC, your collaboration with the NNC uh, going forward and uh, moving on from, uh, f f from this phase of the TA and the technical assistance? Thank you, uh, Sergio. So one, I was in my slide uh, this evening, I was talking about synergies of uh, this TA with the overall NI country program. And I was saying as as again to re-echo says here, was saying that the leadership, ownership and leadership of your local check, uh, chief executives are critical really to move the nutrition uh, program uh, forward. In, in our case, in our uh, program activities, like in our right start project areas, you know, we ride on on that uh, uh, mobilization activities to really get the, uh, the support and ownership of, uh, of local governments. We are implementing technical solutions in our projects, but that technical solutions need, you know, political solutions coming from local chief executives. And these two are synergistic. You know? It has the, the, the programs, the service delivery programs uh, at the municipal and barangay level has benefited, has, has leverage from this, from these LGU uh, mobilization activities. So how do we take this forward uh, as LNC? You know? I, I think beyond you know, the current PPAN, there's of course a successor PPAN, you know, that, that NNC now is probably starting already to, to uh, plan to conceptualize. You know? The key lessons you know, uh, that has learned, that has been learned from uh, the, the, this uh, PPAN 2017 to 22 are really very important inputs to guide the development of their successor PPAN. I have, uh, Seth has, has mentioned about unfinished business. You know? And uh, this, this, as we said, are important points which we brought forward uh, with the development of the new plan of action uh, for nutrition in the Philippines. Back to you, Sergio. Uh, thanks so much for that, uh, Dr. Loretta. And I, I think it's always good to, to end thinking about the future uh, and that better things uh, are, are coming. So uh, thanks so much for that. And I wanted to thank uh, all four panelists. Uh, thanks, Reggie. Uh, thanks, Mayor Garcia. Thanks, Dr. Loretto and Cess um, for um, being so uh, spontaneous with your answers and for having had this discussion. So thank you so much. And thanks to everyone who posted questions. Uh, apologies, of course, we didn't have time to get to all of them. I know that uh, Reggie and others have been answering questions in the chat box, and we'll do our best to, to answer uh, questions that were left pending uh, after the webinar. So thanks, everyone, for having sure. posted the questions. Sure. Yes. Me. Yes, hello. Um, before we answer, um, let, me, let me take this opportunity to thank um, and team for this uh, opportunity. And uh, personally, a special thank you to um, Sir Cecilio Adorna for the help. Um, even before I started my administration, he was there to support and guide the municipality of Talibon. I don't know if um, how far can we go without Sir Cecilio Adorna. So, Sir, from the municipality of Talibon, we are so grateful and so thankful of knowing you and for all your efforts in helping Talibon to, uh, to really excel in uh, our activities and our programs in nutrition. Thank you, sir, from the, from the bottom of the hearts of every Talibongnon. Sir Adorna, thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Mayor Garcia. And uh, a great, uh, great mention there, Ses. Awesome. So thank you so much. Uh, thanks to all four of you. And I will hand over uh, back to Shrikanth. Over to you, Shrikanth. Thank you so much, Reggie, Mayor Janet, Dr. Loreto, Sess, and Sergio for that engaging panel discussion. It was an enriching discussion on efforts placed by the government of Philippines across all levels in translating national plans into actions at the subnational level. 
More importantly, today's discussion reiterated the key role of local government units in pushing the nutrition agenda and achieving the targets set by the nation for a healthier population. Even more important during these current pandemic times. We are now drawing this webinar to a close. I would like to mention that when the session ends, a feedback survey will open on your screen. We would greatly appreciate if you can please take three minutes of your time to complete the survey so that we can know how you enjoyed our session. We will be sharing a copy of the presentations and the recordings in the coming days. Also, please note that we'll be hosting a webinar on Kenya's mobilization of counties for nutrition action with technical assistance for Nutrition International in the month of July. Please keep your eyes open for the invitation in the coming weeks. Thank you all again. Take care and stay safe, everyone. Thank you.